Okay, today I'm gonna to break down everything that I changed from running a three hour 25 marathon to running a two hour 24 marathon in less than three years. And the reason I'm gonna break that down for you is because I often talk about representing England and running two hours 21 for the marathon. I talk about running 100K for Great Britain and running six hours 42. The reason I tell you those things is because I want to give you a reason why you should be listening to me. With so much noise out there, whether it's YouTube or other platforms, why should you be listening to this specific person? I also tell you that I started from scratch and it's absolutely true, but I see a lot of disbelief in the comments, but that's true for distance running and especially marathon running. People think they can be as fast as what they can see and believe around them whether that's at the running club, whether it's from the office or within their group of friends. But to, to make more than one hour time up on your marathon in three years seems inconceivable. So when I restarted running in 2010, I'd run as a kid track and field and cross country and been okay. I'd also been cycle touring for the last 11, 12 months. So I just went out, I'm gonna run for an hour, I'll come back, go for a jog and Within 400 meters, I had to stop and walk back, but I'd lit a fire, despite sort of being deflated as to what fitness had not transferred over from cycling and to where I actually was based on what I could do in the past, in football, rugby, and my running, all of a sudden this fire was lit inside me and that's all I wanted to be. And with cycle touring for 12 months, what I realized in my head and the reason I restarted running was that I wanted to get up in the morning and do exactly what I loved from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. And that's exactly what you do in your cycle touring for me. And it's exactly what I've done for 15 years as a runner. But it's also insanely motivating when you're constantly receiving feedback that you're moving forward when you're at the start of your running journey. But you've got to turn that initial motivation into consistency and discipline to keep riding those waves. And there are many of those waves and you can continue to ride them or you can really learn to surf. So let's start from the Barcelona Marathon in 2011. I came 2,699th place and ran three hours 25. And the second half was excruciating. I was suffering for 20K. And what it taught me about the marathon is, yes, you need to respect the distance, but you also cannot be intimidated by the distance, meaning that I've got to get used to learning to race the distance as opposed to just trying to survive it. And so the way that I put that lesson to use is, I got fully stuck in to ultra marathon running and got used to running for three, four, five hours. And that became normal for me. And what that did for me was turn me into an endurance monster. So I had lots of endurance. That became my key strength. One key strategy that really helped me was I just became laser light focused on the goal. And the goal was to become the fastest possible marathon runner. So ultra distance, 5K, 10K, half marathon, all those distances became training for me becoming the fastest possible marathon runner I could. And so I turned 5K, 10Ks into training runs. I turned half marathons into training runs by running double and being out there for a long time. And again, tapping into that strength and building that strength of becoming an endurance monster. Every other race was a checkpoint on the way to becoming a faster marathon runner. And a huge part of this journey and improvement was being hyper aware of my strengths and weaknesses. And if you know your strengths and weaknesses, and in this case it was endurance for me, you can manage your training schedule, you can manage your time to develop your weaknesses, yes, but to also work on your strengths and become hyper aware of what you're actually capable of. A great example of this was me understanding that yeah, I've run three hours 25 for the marathon, but I know that if I can improve and get my half marathon time just to 70 minutes, even though the race calculators would predict that was a 227 or more marathon, I know that coming from an endurance background and knowing that that's my key strength, if I can just get to 70 minutes, I can pinch a lot more minutes and I can run way faster than 227. And that's essentially exactly what happened. What it also does for you, if you're coming from a similar direction, you've got lots of endurance, but you struggle with the speed, 
is you're able to move over the ground slower in training and build that aerobic base, build that engine, which is way less riskier than going out there and running lots of speed. And that's exactly why pace calculators can be misleading. Runners will often come to me and say, this is what I'm capable of because I've put my time into a calculator and it says I'm pos it's possible for me to run this. So immediately you have this limiting belief in place where that's not taking into consideration what your strengths and weaknesses are. It's giving you an off the shelf answer. It's only showing you a small fragment of the story and you're so much more of an individual than an off the shelf answer. A simple example of this is you might be able to run 1820 for 5K and that will tell you in the calculators that you're capable of a sub three hour marathon. But what about if you've not done long runs and specific long runs? What about if you've not built that aerobic base and you've just got lots of speed in you? Equally, if you can run 20, 21 minutes for 5K, that would then tell you you're not, not possible at all for you to run a sub three marathon. But what about all, if all your training is focused on you building endurance because you're trying to attack the marathon and ultra distance? And what about if that's your strength? So you've got to be incredibly self-aware and almost ignore the calculators because it's only going to give you an indication. So for me, it became all about building an endurance monster. Whether I was running 50K or 50 miles or half marathons and turning them into to two half marathons and running a marathon and using that as training. And people thought I was pretty crazy because I would come like fourth, fifth, sixth in big races in the half marathon. And if I could go maybe five or 10% quicker, I would have been winning or on the podium. But it wasn't about that for me. I was locked into the fastest possible marathon runner I could become. And that's exactly what I did. I ran 70 minutes at the Toro Molinos half marathon and then three weeks later went to Seville with complete confidence. And if I would have listened to the pace calculators, I would have been aiming at between 227 and 234. But I was so confident that I'd built this big engine that I was able to set off at the pace that I needed to hit 124. 224 and I ran the first half in 112, second half in 112. What that does for you is uh, enables you to go off very confidently, find the group, dig in when it gets tough and know that it will. And then when you're finishing off in the last 10K, you're passing so many people that have gone off too fast and misjudged it and the wheels are falling off. But because you built that endurance and you've got stacks of it left, it's just about you digging in. That's your only focus, to dig in and finish the job. If you're looking to make a similar leap forward in performance, and you're not interested in one, two, three percent performance improvements, but massive leaps forward, then contact me, book a call and let's chat. I'm all about working with people, removing limiting beliefs and absolutely going for it.